President Trump blasting special counsel Robert Mueller's biased legal team today, tweeting this, quote, the 13 angry Democrats in charge of the Russian witch hunt are starting, starting to find out that there is a court system in place that actually protects people from injustice. And just wait till the courts get to see your unrevealed conflicts of interest. Joining us tonight, Judicial Watch President Tom Fitton. Tom, great to see you. Uh, let, let's start with the president's tweet. Uh, he, he laid it out. It seems pretty clear that uh, the president is in possession or would seem to be uh, of some uh, evidence uh, of conflicts that we don't even know about uh, with Bob Mueller and his uh, band of left-wing ideologues. Well, the ones we do know about ought to be concerning enough. We've right. got Mr. Mueller, who interviewed for the FBI job. He's conflicted. Rod Rosenstein, who recommended the firing over which Mr. Trump's being investigated. He's conflicted. The number two, Andrew Weissman, we found was sending supportive email to uh, Sally Yates as she stood athwart the president's travel ban order, mm -hmm. supporting that lawlessness, attending Hillary Clinton's election night party. Uh, so that's three. Uh, I don't know what else you could possibly have. You have all these other Clinton donors on on the payroll of uh, uh, Mr. Mueller's team. Not one registered Republican, as best we can tell, and we've looked at it. Uh, on top of that, you've got the fundamental issue of the lack of authority of Mr. Mueller. Constitutionally speaking, he's a rogue prosecutor. It's been the case from the moment of his appointment. And no matter how many CYA memos that Rosenstein writes months after the fact, it ain't going to fix it. That's and what Judge Ellis was getting at. Judge Ellis, uh, the district court judge in Virginia, I, I mean, I have, I have, in reading the transcript of his uh, hearing with the attorneys, both uh, for the uh, defendant, uh, uh, Manafort, uh, and uh, for the special counsel. I mean, listening to those special counsel attorneys, I, I mean, uh, even from the transcript, the condescending uh, tone that they took uh, with the judge, uh, who then finally had to point out as they tried to hide behind secret decoder rings, uh, that he did point out that he is currently uh, handling, I believe, three espionage trials involving, of course, uh, highly sensitive top secret material. Uh, when he says produce the scope memorandum and he will judge whether or not it pertains to the case before him, uh, your thoughts about how he is likely to rule if you can uh, judge that at all? Well, I don't know how he's going to rule, uh, but he's going to hold the government accountable. They run right, right smack dab into the rule of law here. You know, we've sued for the uh, scope, any scoping memos they have. They refuse to tell us they had anything. Just the other day, a few hours, Lou, after this hearing, they gave us the scope memo that's been redacted. And it's interesting because the Department of Justice said... The August 2nd memorandum. The, yeah, the August 2nd memorandum, uh, written months after Mueller was appointed, after the raid of Manafort. Mm -hmm. And the Justice Department said, we're going to look at this and see if there's anything else we can release from the memo. So the Justice Department's been put back on its heels, I think in part by our lawsuit, but certainly by the judge, mm -hmm. in uh, having to explain itself here. And I... You know, I I heard and I saw that Rudy Giuliani said the White House Counsel's Office can't get even a copy of this memo. The president has to understand, despite what his lawyers are telling him who are afraid of this issue, I think, uh, within the Justice Department and the White House Counsel's Office, he's the prosecutor in chief. The Justice Department reports to him and he should demand full transparency and accountability about what this agency is up to. That yes. includes Mr. Mueller who up until Friday was king of the Justice Department. You know, I think there is there's room here uh, for the president to be concerned about bringing Congress along with him. The fact that uh, Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell have been feckless, gutless and unprincipled to this point in defending this president and the nation of laws, the United States of America ought to give every American considerable pause. I, under, I, I, I get the feeling. I have not uh, spoken to the president about this. Uh, he's not said anything to me. Uh, but I have to tell you, I have the feeling uh, that he is correct to try to bring along Congress. And I think the American people should be bringing along Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan as well, Tom. Uh, they should be letting them know it's time to stop this. 
The ignorance is palpable on every perspective when you look at what is happening with this special counsel. It's rigged. It's politically and ideologically rigged with the, uh, the dominance of the president called them 13 angry Democrats. They're far worse than that. These are left-wing activists uh, on the payroll of the special counsel attacking and trying to undermine the president of the United States. All of the crimes I can find, as I said earlier in this broadcast, huh? I, I mean, the DNC, uh, the, the, the right. fusion uh, GPS, the, the phony, fraudulent dossier, uh, the, the role of James Comey, uh, Bob Mueller, and all of this. You just go through it, and the crimes are all on this, you know, in the shadows of the United States government rather than the man that they are trying to subvert, President and, Trump. And, and, and I think the president is frustrated. I think it's quite evident he's frustrated. He's mm -hmm. the only one trying to protect the rule of law from uh, Mueller's encroachments. The leadership of Congress is afraid of Mueller. They're not providing oversight. Congress is not providing oversight. You've got maybe four members on the Hill who are asking tough questions of Let Mr. Mueller. Let me say Mueller. Devin Nunes. Let me, again, uh, remind people that the Freedom Caucus is standing up. Ron DeSantis, I, I, this, is, this is a moment in our history where people who stand up are going to be remembered. They're going to be uh, revered by future generations. Those who do not, and there are too many of them, uh, will obviously be otherwise regarded. Imagine, imagine if they had a hearing where Mr. Mueller and Mr. Uh, Rosenstein had to come in and explain what their authority and yeah. what their investigative scope is. They'd lie Basic like they have oversight. before, Tom. They're, they're going to lie. This is no time. And I agree with Devin Nunes, I, and Ron DeSantis, and those who have said, now it's a citation of contempt and move toward impeachment because Jeff Sessions is an embarrassment to the nation. Rod Rosenstein is an embarrassment to the nation, as are the leaders of the uh, Republican House and Senate. Uh, this is a time... Uh, for men and women to stand up uh, and and serve the nation. The president should shut the Mueller operation down. If Rosenstein or Mr. Uh, uh, Sessions won't step up, the president should recognize his power as a constitutional yeah. officer to take care that the laws be faithfully executed. Mueller's undermining the rule of law with this investigation. Right. It has no authority and no effective oversight by those responsible to the American taxpayer. He needs to provide the oversight and shut it down.